What's going on guys, Flame of Rebirth here to talk about Bleach Bankai's. In today's video, we'll kick things off with the infamous captain of the 11th squad, Kenpachi Zuraki. I know the video says Bankai Breakdown, but it's impossible to talk about the Bankai effectively without factoring in the Shikai of the character in question, so I will be talking about Kenpachi Shikai as well. In addition to that, I want to make it very clear that I am aware of some new Kenpachi Zuraki information making the rounds, and I elect not to talk about that here. The information that's out there does not paint the full picture, and I elect to wait a little while before jumping on that. So anyway, when it comes to Kenpachi Zuraki, the first thing we need to talk about is this. Kenpachi, prior to revealing his Nozorashi Park Toe, always has a constant release Shikai in base form. Now, I wish I didn't have to use the word constant release Shikai, because when I think of a constant release Shikai, I'm thinking Ichigo is on Getsu. For Ichigo, he's already in Shikai and it remains in Shikai. That is that. This is different. This is a Shikai released sword with no spiritual component to it. Consider this. When a Soul Reaper, in the Shinyo Academy at least, when they enter the Academy, they're given a standard sword. Look at the characters like Toshiro, Byakuya, Yamamoto, and all the other characters who passed through the academy. Their swords all have variations of some kind, but they're normal swords. They have a uniform appearance. The guard changes from person to person, but at the end of the day, they look like standard katanas. Kenpachi's sword is different. Not only is it massively longer than all the others, the blade is jagged. So, due to its appearance, I don't want to call it a normal sword, but at the same time, the only difference it has is in its appearance because it does not have any spiritual component to it. Due to that, I want to refrain from calling it a constant release Shikai. For the purposes of this video, I'll call it an unsealed Zonpak Toe. I realize it's a weird title, but I don't know what else to call it. We do know that Kenpachi stole the sword from a Shinigami corpse, so it's possible that for some unknown reason, the Shinigami's blade remained released and Kenpachi just kept it from there. This idea is actually quite interesting to consider. We 100% know that Kenpachi stole a sword from a corpse. It could either be a very old sword that just looks like that, or it could be the released Shikai of some Shinigami that did not revert back to normal after death. I'm really not sure which of the two is the better fit. In the world of Bleach, the Zonpak Toe along with its identity is born from the Shinigami, but it gets imprinted onto an Asauchi. What that means is that the origin of a Zanpak Toe is the Shinigami's soul, but to manifest the Zanpak Toe, you need an Asauchi, and all the swords given to the Soul Reapers are Asauchi. So it's possible that Kenpachi stole the sword from the body of a dead Shinigami, and then, using the Asauchi of that Shinigami, imprinted his own soul onto the sword to manifest his own individual Shikai and Bankai. Let's put on our Bleach thinking caps and talk about Nozorashi. How would you categorize Nozorashi? You see, in Bleach, the Zonpak Toe have trends and categorizations to them. I personally categorize her as a melee-type Shikai. If you consider a Shikai like Ryujin Jaka, it's an elemental-type Zonpak Toe, whereas a Shikai like Shinsui's Katen Kyokatsu is a hacks-type Zonpak Toe. Nozorashi is a melee-type Shikai because the sword changes, it becomes bigger, but it does not necessarily offer anything like an elemental or hacks-type ability. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Even though it's extremely likely that Nozorashi is a melee type Shikai, we do have to consider the fact that Kenpachi only just learned Shikai in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, so it is possible that his Shikai has an ability he just doesn't know yet. With that in mind, I'll have to give him a Shikai mastery level of 25%. He's literally just attained it, and he probably has so much more to learn. Now, onto his Bankai, and there are some thrilling concepts to consider here. So we know that as per Bleach theory, the closer the Shinigami is to his Zonpak Toe, the stronger they are. This raises a lot of questions when it comes to Kenpachi. For one, Kenpachi is the first Bleach character who we see attain a Bankai in real time. Think back. Ichigo attained his Bankai off-screen and showed it to us against Byakuya. So did Renji both times, and so did Rukia. Characters like Kisuke, Ikaku, Yamamoto, and Shinsui already had a Bankai before the Bleach story chronologically began. Kenpachi is the first person we see actually go from no Bankai to an active Bankai in real time. It does raise questions about the actual method of Bankai attainment, but I intend to make a video on that. Fear not. Another fascinating aspect of Kenpachi's Bankai is that it does not have a name. Usually, the Shinigami themselves are the ones to state the Bankai's name, but since Kenpachi becomes a ravaging monster who doesn't talk, we don't know its name. I have to wonder how much that affects Kenpachi overall, 
because old man Zangetsu tells Ichigo the importance of knowing the names of an attack and the difference it makes. Ichibe Hyosube reinforces this idea when he tells Renji that his aunt Pakuto lied to him when it told him it's Bankai's name. The point is, names matter in Bleach. I'm willing to concede that as long as Kenpachi himself knows the name, which is possible without saying it openly, then everything's okay. But this leads us to the third indicator of an unmastered Bankai. A little bit of review if you missed the video. You can check out the video by clicking the link in the upper right corner of your screen for the full breakdown. But for the sake of this video, here are the first two indicators. Number one is a lack of control. Number two is self-harm. And now, we know the third indicator of an amassed Bankai is an incomplete name. Renji was unable to master his Bankai because his aunt Pakuto did not tell him its full name. You cannot master a Bankai whose name you do not fully know. And since Renji is proof that you can attain Bankai even without knowing the true name of your blade, I'm willing to see that Kimpachi could be fighting without actually knowing his Bankai's name. It's not a fact, but it is possible. While in his Bankai state, Kimpachi's skin turns a dark red color. He grows horns, and at first, when I looked at the image of him in Bankai, I thought he had black markings on his body, but I'm pretty sure that that's just the shading. Beyond that, I've thought about it and I don't believe Kenpachi's Bankai has a set ability. Just like Ichigo's Bankai, it magnifies his physical abilities. His speed, his strength, reaction time, and durability are all magnified. So we can conclude that Kenpachi's Rocky Zanpak To, in both Shikai and Bankai, are melee type abilities that focus on increasing his physical capabilities. The next thing I want to focus on in this video is mastery level. As you know, I'm very big on mastery levels and just in case you're new and don't know what I'm talking about, I have a video where I go into detail about this concept, but here's the basic idea. I believe that in the world of Bleach, there is a massive power difference between those who have gone through the 10 years required to master their Bankai versus those who have simply attained it. And I give the reasons for coming to that conclusion. In Kimpachi's case, not only is it lacking in abilities, it causes self-harm to its user. If you know your Bankai theory, you know that a Bankai that is lacking in multiple stages, a Bankai without a full complete name, and a Bankai that causes its user self-harm is indicative of an unmastered Bankai. Kubo actually makes it extremely easy for us to know this because Yachiru comes out to apologize to Kimpachi, lamenting that she released too much of his power and that his body is not strong enough to handle it. He actually blows his arm off and immediately goes down. I hope that these new pieces of information shows you that mastering your Bankai is not a matter of if. If you don't master your Bankai and you head into battle, it could literally be the death of you. That's why I'm excited to see the new Bleach arc because I expect a bunch of new Bankai to be mastered. Between Rukia, Renji, Toshiro, Soifon, and Kimpachi, they should all have completely mastered Shikai and most importantly, 100% Bankai mastery. The final component to Kenpachi's Bankai breakdown is a theoretical look at what his mastered Bankai could be. Now, a character like Kenpachi is fine not having an elemental or hacks type ability. I believe that it suits him just fine. But what could his mastered Bankai look like? In my mind, the first thing that needs to go is the self-inflicted damage. You cannot have your limbs blowing off when you take a swing. The second thing is that based on his appearance after he concluded his Bankai transformation, it probably has an immense drawback physically. I'm aware that it's not necessarily bad to have physical effects from extremely powerful transformations, but he definitely needs to limit how badly it will affect him. And finally, the last thing I would want to see out of a mastered Bankai is for him to be sentient. He cannot be a monster hacking and slashing everything in sight because that carries an obvious risk of friendly fire. Do that, and I'm not gonna lie. Kenpachi is going to become more legit than he already is. Anyway, that's all the information I have for you today. Thank you all so much for the love you've shown to my other Bleach videos. It means so much to me. I promise to keep the contents as thought-provoking and educational as possible so that as you watch, you're not getting hit with information you already know, but gaining new perspectives on the wonderful world that is Bleach. Who's going to be the next Soul Reaper for Bankai Breakdown? I'll let you choose. Comment down below who you guys want next and I will do exactly that. With that, I bid you adieu. It's your boy Rebirth, signing off. Peace.